the three piece format live doesn't it's it's kind of an illusion like it kind of always has been for three piece bands whether it's Jimi Hendrix or or the Who or the Police or if you listen to board tapes by these bands they're never that good because the amount of energy it takes to translate live to an audience isn't necessarily literally very musical all the time when people think critically one of the first things they think is you know is this the future and it maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Who knows? It doesn't matter to me, really. It's if it's effective musically. The hometown, you know, forget about that. They, they kill us every time we, we do something. It's like, I think the last one said, it's pretty funny. It said, the only good thing to come out of this record is that I have something to say to the cashier when I take my record back, which is give me my money back, you bitch. And it is a song that's so direct that it goes over live lyrically. I mean, you know, there's a lot of great songs that you play in a, a rock club. It's like, that's what you're seeing, you know, when, when you look out and people, but, but this is more like, like that. To me, even Barbara Streisand's an influence, or Joni Mitchell, or Ricky Lee Jones, or um, Randy Newman, um, got Jimi Hendrix for that matter. The downside is um, is lighting. I don't. Sometimes I get forgotten about in lighting, and they just we want all these 27 lights just on Ben, and um, and now these guys' wife running lights. I'm sure that'll be no different. I have a pretty romantic notion about what retro is. I never wanted to be um, I never wanted to be Lenny Kravitz or somebody like that, or be the Beatles, recreate the Beatles. I'm not into that at all. I just think um, I think. That the classic sort of Brill Building songwriting or like early Broadway-ish, Gershwin-ish songwriting, I think that's, that's a really neat thing. I can't do it myself, but Ben does a decent job at like just appealing to a lot of, a lot of people, you know, through straight up songwriting. I saw a guy peeing one time, I was in um, Iowa City, <laughs> and uh, first he, re he reached out to shake my hand, and he, and he like was so like so into it. It's like one of those monster handshakes you get in a sports bar. And he, he was doing that to me. I was like, all right, you know. And I was about to miss my, my intro on bass. You know, I was like, okay, give me my hand back. And I, I start playing. And uh, I could tell he was really wasted. And he was giving these girls a hard time. And the next thing I know, he's like looking down. He's like, you know, doing that kind of shake thing, you know, guys do. And um, he was peeing. Women like that song the most. I mean, I think uh, guys get a little nervous to like, they kind of do this thing, you know, like, oh, I'm not faced. And, but uh, women really like that song a lot, actually. The whole idea of like composing and playing on a piano, there's certain places you're going to go. I mean, you can, you can do it a very Ricky Lee Jones way or a very like Joni Mitchell or, you know, the way Tori Amos plays, you know. But if you're going to try to write pop music, you just tend, you end up sounding a little bit like a lot of people. I mean, you just use certain extensions, certain chords. The upside is that um, you, you know there's only three of you, so you, you you we show up to a club and everyone assumes there's five of us. So there's always plenty of more beer and more food for for all three of us. I, I just think it's ridiculous. I mean, I don't wear vintage clothing. I mean, this isn't okay. Well, I do wear vintage clothing, but uh, I don't play old instruments. Well, except my drums, they are old, but uh, and. But all, everything we're doing is fresh, and it's not, you know, no one's ever used a piano before except, well, a couple people did before, but. It was one of our first tours, and uh, there was this point in the set where Ben would uh, jump up on his piano and stand on his piano, and, and at this particular instance, he jumped up on his piano, and the piano, one of the legs fell off and it cracked and it fell down and like two strings went flying out in Robert's direction and that was kind of the end of the show. That song was basically just a true story. Uh, you go out to, to dinner, um, you pay for dinner and the whole time you're, the person you're taking out knows they never want to see you again but they want the free meal. And, uh, and more importantly you never get back your black t-shirt. They've been, I think all guys know that you will lose clothing in a relationship. I know that Ben was very into Neil Sedak and Randy Newman and early Elton John. 